Good day, folks. Everything new under the sun. So we talked about the Shemitah year, but I want to talk about the Jubilee, which is a little bit different. So uh, the Shemitah is what happens every seven uh, years. The Jubilee is what happens every uh, 49 or uh, 50th year, technically speaking. So I want to uh, take a look at that as um, the, the idea of uh, the Jubilee, you know, when does that happen? Uh, is it going to occur soon? Uh, can we know the cycle that it's on? So Shemitah or sabbatical year. And so that, again, that refers to the six years of work. The seventh is the Shemitah. And this is, of course, when the stock market seems to go down. Other things seem to happen. The Jubilee really is the is the um, the 50th year. Uh, um, uh, basically the year of return where uh, major things return back to original owners, etc. So on the seventh year, land lays fallow, often characterized by economic downturn, recession, and, and it goes along with the idea of six days of creation, one day of rest in the, in the, the seven days uh, of creation. So what is a jubilee year? Well, a jubilee year occurs after seven sets of seven intervals, seven times seven, 49 years. The special period is proclaimed on one of God's annual feast days, known as the Day of Atonement. Now, that's one of the feasts that's coming up that hasn't been fulfilled yet. Because God owns everything, he set up a special regularly occurring time period called Jubilee, when a man's possessions would re be returned to him. Um, likewise, on uh, a Jubilee, uh, Everything in the earth will return to him. He will own it again. He will make it new for the millennial reign of Christ. So we looked at that the, this chart on the bottom, biblical jubilee chronology, and it goes all the way up to the 120th jubilee, which is um, supposedly the uh, Christ Christ's reign begins on earth, or the millennial reign of Christ, and it goes through from creation all the way through. So where does it come from? Well. Um, or, or rather, uh, uh, when does it start? I want to take a look at an interesting, um, let me just go, that's not what I want to look at. Um, I want to take a look at an interesting article here. Uh, let's see. Well, let's, let's read this. What happens during the year of Jubilee? The biblical requirement is that the Jubilee year was to be treated like a sabbatical year. So, uh, you know, the year once every seven years, sabbatical or Shemitah, with the land laying fallow, so similar, but it's a longer time span, but also required the compulsory return of all property, property to its original owners or heirs, except the houses of the laymen within the walled cities, in addition to the uh, manumission of all Israelites. This 50th year is sacred. It's a time when freedom and celebration, when everybody will receive back their own property and slaves will return home to their families if one of your brothers becomes indignant and has to sell himself to you, don't make him work as a slave, treat him as a hired hand or guest among you. He will work for you until the Jubilee. <clears throat> and that's out of uh, Leviticus uh, 25. Uh, so it's Leviticus 25, uh, 10, 39 uh, to 40. So what does it mean? The designating of a Jubilee is not just for allowing the land to rest. It's a reminder that just like the weekly seventh-day uh, Bible Sabbath uh, that God has created everything, it is also a reminder that humans are not the only owners of the land and are not uh, to hold on to property forever. Because we are thankful uh, to God for liberating us, we should also liberate others from debt to us. Any nation would receive a tremendous, tremendous blessing if they observed this extra special span of time. People would not ring up huge debt and there would be no great imbalance between the wealthy and the poor. So this is God's kind of plan to rebalance the economy, resettle things for people uh, in a more forced manner that didn't happen over the seven years. So it's a it's God's idea to uh, of um, to make things equal in the economy uh, without being uh, communism, if you will. The value of land would stabilize, so it would kind of reset things back to normal. And usual giants up, giant ups and downs of the economy would not happen under God's original design there. God's laws would be taught every seventh year. Um, sadly, we will have to hold on to the millennial reign of Christ before the world is willing to obey him in this manner, until we get back to the God's economy, basically. Now, I want to bring to your attention uh, this uh, very fascinating article, a PDF, uh, in fact, um, that I've come across, which uh, is very interesting and looks at the timing 
of the Jubilee. So this is, <clears throat> now I'll see if I can maybe find the link for you. I don't have the link immediate here, but this is from postscripts.org and it's by Louis B. Vega. So when is the Jubilee year? Because if we know the Jubilee year, we can kind of understand the Lord's return, right? So reading out of Luke uh, 4, it says, uh, and I think I have this here. Uh, let me go here and go here. Reading out of uh, Luke 4. Luke 4. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up uh, for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord. Hmm. Maybe a jubilee year. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is scripture fulfilled in your ears. Fascinating. <clears throat> A fascinating verse uh, out of Luke about Jesus basically reading about himself and fulfilling scripture. So back to this. And, and that's what this uh, uh, Luke chapter 4 uh, is about in the top section there. So this, this is a study uh, made by Louis B. Vega. We're going to read some of it because he goes through, th through some interesting uh, calculations as to when the Jubilee could be. The purpose of the study is to present a theory uh, that strongly suggests that the true years of Jubilee, when the true years of Jubilee occur. Or a, a better question is, at the end of the sabbatical cycle, will Jesus be returning? I wonder if I can make that bigger for you. Uh, okay, one jubilee year can be determined as a year that corresponded in Jesus' life when Jesus read aloud in the synagogue, and, and sorry about the background noise, uh, at Nazareth, the portion of the Isaiah scroll. It was also the start of his ministry, and based on Jesus' birthday, with the timeline identified, one can possibly calibrate, calibrate all jubilee years, past, present, and future. It must be understood that a jubilee a year of Jubilee always follows a sabbatical cycle of seven years times seven, or 49 years total. In this case, the 50th year would constitute the Jubilee. So this is all uh, needed understanding to understand you know, what a Jubilee is, when it happens, um, so that you can calculate it. Thus, the theory contends in turn, one can calculate when Jesus will return to earth. It will likely, likewise coincide with an end to a sabbatical cycle of seven years, as in Daniel's 70th week. So this is this is interesting stuff. One only needs to calculate from the date of his birth to determine with accuracy all the years of the subsequent sabbatical cycles of seven years. Now again, this, this depends on the birth of Christ. If we get the birth of Christ correct, of course we know that the Gregorian calendar was not uh, is is based on the birth of Christ. That was supposed to be what it was based off of, but in fact, scholars agree that, in fact, Jesus was born several years prior to the start of the Gregorian calendar. So both uh, times will uh, thus cor uh, correspond in tandem to Jesus' start of his ministry and his return. Can this assertion be possible to calculate and, uh, to calculate and be reliable? As noted, the premise is based on Jesus' birth and how Yahweh appears to delineate time by the creation pattern of weeks, months, and years. Following is the argument and calculation based on the sabbatical times, uh, sabbatical cycles of time. If minus 3 BC was Jesus' birth, and, and, P, and scholars uh, agree that it's, you know, um, 3, 4, 5, maybe even 6 years before the, the Gregorian calendar actually started, then it would have been in 28 AD. And, and that 28 AD is a number <clears throat> that I've thrown around uh, that some others like Kent Hovind have, have put around. And we kind of calculate off that, uh, you know, 2,000 years um, uh, from that period, from the death of Christ, 2,000 years, because the death of Christ is really the milestone event, uh, I, I believe, and others believe, that kick off the last two days of um, the six-day week, and then we head into the millennial reign of Christ. 
So if minus 3 BC was Jesus' birth or before the Gregorian calendar, as many purport, then it would have been 20 AD when Jesus had read publicly the portion of Isaiah, so that portion we just read. Then it would, uh, this would have put the year uh, 27 AD as the end of the sabbatical cycle of seven years and uh, 49th. All right. Based on what one calls the Isaiah 61 Jubilee theory, it would mean that the 20 that 2022 would be the start of a seven-year sabbatical cycle, the 45th segment since 27 AD. Then 2028 would be the end of the sabbatical cycle and Jesus return in 2029. So again, we, we don't we're several years out, one, two, three, four, five years out. Don't know exactly where because we don't know exactly when Jesus was born. Um, because the Gregorian didn't start on Jesus' birth. If it did, it would the, the calculation, the math would be very, very simple. Uh, but that's not how it occurred, apparently. When this, uh, it's, it goes on, then 2020 it would be the end of a uh, sabbatical cycle, and he would return in 2029. When this theory is thus strongly suggesting is that uh, the time frame 2022 to 2028 cycle would uh, correspond to Daniel's 70th week. Now, are we in the 70th week yet? I don't believe we are because I think the Antichrist has to show himself and kind of take leadership in the world. But it is only October 20th, 2022, so we'll see. And I always thought kind of the end of this year is when maybe when the seven-year period starts. I don't know. Um, and time's running out, but we'll see. So it goes on. Uh, but it, uh, So the end, uh, 2022 to 2028, uh, corresponds to the 70th uh, Jubilee segment of time and the 495th sabbatical cycle since Israel crossed the Jordan into the Promised Land. Jesus is to return then in 2029, according to this, on Yom Teruah, the anniversary month of his birth, no less. The theory bases the correct Jubilee year sequences or cycles on key, several key historical factors that will then be triangulated. So now it goes on, and uh, I'll try and put a link in the description to all of this. But let's take a, uh, let's go further here. Even to this day, Israel is waiting for such a man, i.e. the Messiah, that will precisely fill that Messiah position for them. Sadly, it will be a false one. So they, uh, when the Antichrist comes, they will recognize the Messiah, or the Antichrist rather, as their Messiah um, because he, he shows miracles and he seems to give them back their land uh, via this you know, two-state solution, whatever it may be, and he provides peace in the land for a seven-year period. Uh, and so they believe he is the, their Messiah that they that they missed 2,000 years ago when they put him on a cross. We, we all put him on a cross, really. Um, but and, and this is what it's talking about. And as many as noted, Jesus did not read the eighth point and to execute the vengeance of our God, because at that point, Jesus was not ready to execute the vengeance yet. That will take place during the tribulation period. And I would... I would uh, uh, specify and uh, and uh, hone down that further and say the last half or the great tribulation um, the vengeance uh, vengeance of God will be during the great tribulation or the last half the last three and a half years of, the, of that seven year period so why is 2080 AD significant then is because it is when Jesus uh, it was at this time Jesus then needed to have started his public ministry at the age of 29 uh, years old going into that year this would have uh, uh, would, would have to be in keeping to his age being 33.3 at the time of his crucifixion. Burial and resurrection then in 32 AD. Again, it is based off Jesus' birth, minus 3 BC, if that's correct. Could be minus 4, minus 5, who knows. Thus, 28 AD was a jubilee, was the jubilee year. So that's, that's kind of what he's basing it off of. Now he goes into some calculations here to, to look at uh, what this is all about. As noted from 2880, there will be a 40 times sabbatical cycle that leads then to the concluding one of 2022-2028 and Jesus' return in 2029. This will be spelled out in the study calculations below with the numerical calculations. So he suggests that 8788 was the 40th sabbatical cycle. Um, uh, and uh, a segment is the seven sabbatical cycles times seven times, or 49-year span of time. 285 sabbatical cycles of seven cycles since 27 AD equals 1995 plus 27 is the year 2022. So you can do all this math if you want to figure this all out. 
Um, 28 AD plus uh, 50 Jubilees would be uh, the year 2000 plus 28 AD uh, equals 20, uh, 2022, again, for the start of the seven-year period is what he's calculating there. Remember, Jubilees are not counted by 50s. <clears throat> This is an alternative count uh, for perspective. The accurate count is 49 years. The 50th year is the first year of the following 49-year cycle on Yom Kippur. So that's uh, something to remember. 2022 plus 7 years equals 2029 Yom Teruah. Uh, assuming a given date of 2022 plus uh, 1260 uh, days in. So he, he goes through a bunch of math there and... Uh, <laughs> Interesting, uh, interesting ideas about uh, what he's uh, trying to uh, figure out there. When exactly is the return of the Lord? Uh, and so he's putting it somewhere around 2028, 2029. Uh, is that what I believe as well? Uh, it absolutely is. So if we go back to the timeline of the return of the Lord, this is my <coughs> standard uh, keynote presentation. We we kind of have this idea of um, the seven or the uh, the tribulation. Starting somewhere around the year 2022, and I thought it was near the end of 2022 where all those arrows are pointing. Um, and, and maybe the return of the Lord somewhere around 2028, maybe late 2028, maybe a little bit after into 2029. Again, it all depends on when Jesus died. Uh, and when Jesus died is based off, of course, when he was born, which uh, is somewhere before the start of the Gregorian, whether it be three, four, five years before that. So the calculation that he is going by <clears throat> was based on uh, three years before the Gregorian uh, started the Gregorian here, and it, all things being equal, uh, we end up with uh, you know about the year 2028, and I get the year 2028 um, again from the death of Jesus plus 2,000 years, um, so about A AD uh, 28 plus 2,000, but the year 2028 also coincides with um, Israel. Israel uh, was uh, 70 years old. In 2018, you see that on the left-hand side, they will turn 80 years old in the year 2028, and uh, it is Psalm. Uh, no, I think it's Psalm 90 um, that that deals with. I should have put that on here uh, about uh, uh, man gets um, 70 years, but if by reason of strength 90, uh, sorry, 80, 80 years, uh, 70 years, um, th uh, three score. Or th uh, if by reason of strength, three score and ten. No, uh, a four score. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm saying it wrong. Um, you understand what I mean. Uh, uh, three score, a uh, score is 20. Three score and 10 is 70. Uh, man gets three score and 10 years lifespan. But if by reason of strength, four score or 80 years. And that's why on this side, on the right hand side, I have 80 years. So Israel turns 80 in 2028. Um, so that timeline of the age of Israel as a nation right now seems to line up with the year 2028 as well. You can go back and look. They held 70th anniversary uh, celebrations in the year 2018. Now, their, their uh, calendar years don't match up with ours exactly, um, but you can go look uh, at that yourself. So very interesting things. It seems to add up uh, maybe around 2028, 2029. And then if the seven-year period is correct, spoken of in Daniel, then you got to come back th off that about seven years. And uh, we have uh, the um, uh, entry of uh, the Antichrist, the seven-year period, the peace deal, the wars and ruins of wars, um, the four horsemen, the apocalypse happening, happening in the first three and a half years, and the wrath of God coming in the last three and a half years, and the two witnesses, and all the things that are happening in the last days, all uh, in there. So uh, time is short regardless. I think a lot of people are coming to a lot of different conclusions, um, but there's a lot of people coming to similar uh, similar time frame, time frame conclusions as to the return of the Lord. So you need to look up for your redemption uh, draws an eye to be sure. <clears throat> so the Jubilee. In the last Jubilee, the 120th, who does the land return to? Well, it returns to Jesus when he rules and reigns in the millennial reign of Christ uh, for a thousand years. So Jesus owns all the land, the great Jubilee that returned it all to him. We like the Jews. If we do not understand the heart of the Shemitah and the Jubilees, we will lose what we uh, do have. That's the practical level. That's kind of the nuts and bolts level that we live at. Prophetically, however, it's the consumption of time, the return of the Lord to take back his land at the 120th 
Jubilee or the return of Christ, the millennial reign of Christ to kick off that Sabbath uh, millennium of rest, that, that last day of the seven uh, as it relates to the creation of six days and the seventh day of rest and the 7,000 year timeline of the return of the Lord. Be prepared, folks. Time is close. Uh, the Lord is close. We are heading into um, what some might call scary days, frightful days. Um, but that's because they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. That's because they don't know their future. They don't know where they, they're going. They don't believe in an afterlife. And uh, their eternity is not assured. But if you know Jesus Christ, you know where you're going. There's no need to fear. Uh, we may go through some hard times, and we will. And Christians all through biblical history have went through some very hard times, even to the point of dying for the cause of Christ. Uh, and you may be asked uh, to do that for Christ. So we simply don't know. We don't know what will exactly come in the future, but the Bible gives us a lot of warning about uh, Revelation 6. Go read Revelation 6, the four horsemen of the apocalypse happen and ride, come before the sun and the moon go dark. The sun and the moon going dark in Revelation 6, 12 is what kicks off the um, wrath of God. And then you have the, the bowls and the trumpet judgments uh, falling at that point. So I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. I um, hope you learned something. And uh, let me know what you think of it in the comments. We'll see you in the next video.